Welcome back to RAF Clearing Live, brought to you by Not Going to Uni. And the final talk, which was all about the application process, everything you need to know about how to apply for apprenticeships and roles within the RAF. And I was joined by James and Thomas from the recruitment team at RAF. The application process. What's the first thing somebody should do? They're sitting at home right now, they've got their A-level results, maybe they've gone well, maybe they haven't, or maybe they're younger and just trying to figure out uh, what opportunities are available to them. They've found the right apprenticeship or the right scheme for them. What's the next steps? Uh, the first and probably the most important thing is get yourself onto the RF Careers website and have a look and just make sure that you've got the educational qualifications for the job that you want. You might not have got them, um, got the grades that you wanted today. However, there are job roles available um, regardless of your educational qualifications from no A levels up to specialist law degrees, doctorates and stuff like that. So there's, there's a good spread. That would be your first real port of call is get yourself on the RF website. Make sure you've got what you need for the job role you've chosen. If you haven't, there's um, almost like a little tool that you can go through to say, here's my educational qualifications um, and my sort of hobbies and interests. And it almost matches you to some job roles as well. So yeah, the RF website is the best bet to start oh, with. Okay, so that's quite handy if it matches you and gives you a, a specific maybe a, a hint as to what might suit you. Uh, so. Can we actually break it down into, uh, you picked an apprenticeship role, w what's the, the first thing you're going to be asked to do? Is it fairly similar with university or UCAS things? You've got, have you got to write a personal statement? How many rounds are there? Can we go through it step by step in that way? Yeah, of course. Um, so nothing too arduous or anything um, that requires a personal statement or anything. Um, we'll send you a number of requests for information. So things like your national insurance number, um, all just basic pieces of information that we need to collate your application really. Uh, once we've got all of those, We'll invite you into the careers office, um, give you a bit of a presentation, explain to you the length of the process, what you can expect from the process, how to prepare for different elements of it, including the interview and the fitness test. Um, and we'll also likely put you through your aptitude assessment the same day. Um, <clears throat> sorry, The aptitude assessment itself, um, it's, a, it's six short psychometric tests um, measuring different parts of your cognitive capacity, essentially. Some are verbal reasoning, there's numerical reasoning, um, a couple of them are geared to, more towards uh, technical trades. So if you're interested in any of the engineering branches that we have uh, apprenticeships for, um, there's uh, electrical and mechanical comprehension um, tests too. Um, then we, once we've got those scores, we look to make sure you've scored for the trade that you want, um, and then we continue the process uh, towards the interview from there. Have you got to be already quite fit before thinking about joining? So normally from starting your application to getting you to the fitness test um, takes around about three to four months. So on the RF website we do have a uh, guide to fitness that's geared over a 12 week programme. So really if you start your application and start that um, fitness programme, if you're already at a base fitness level, uh, you can walk up a couple of flights of stairs and you're good to go. You can follow that 12 week programme and get to where you need to be hopefully at the first attempt. If you're not successful at the first attempt, we can get you back in six to eight weeks' time, and that's generally sort of people that don't pass at the first attempt do get through at the second attempt once oh, they've okay. had that rehab session. Oh, right. So, so, Thomas, coming back to you, is there is there a lot of assistance then along the way with uh, prospective applicants and, and helping guide them through the process at the same time, or are they left a bit on their own for their own devices? Um, no, so every applicant is... Um assigned their own recruiter so that recruiter is available um, via phone email instant message um, on their application portal to get in touch with with any questions or concerns anxieties they might have throughout the process would you encourage people to if they're applying to the RAF is that something that requires their sole focus or are they able to also look around at other places as well or is it so intensive that actually if you're going to do it it, it needs to be all in or, or not at all so I would always recommend that um, never give anything up because you've got an RF application in because there are failure points due the, during the application you might get through and decide that it's not for you and if you've invested all of your time in that what have you what opportunities have you missed out on um, so we get it a lot with year 10 and 11 students that mm. come through with applications about I'm not going to go to college I'm just going to join the Air Force and that it's not a case of just because you've started an application doesn't mean you're going to get a job so think about the what ifs at any point you fail a medical you fail your fitness test what's your backup option um, just to keep yourself going on the on the straight and narrow so to speak yeah for more information head online and search RAF careers or you can go to our website notgoingtouni.co.uk I've been Harry Benjamin I'll see you next time bye bye <laughs>